Hello, Minecrafters and Redstoners. I'm Natanis Likens, and welcome to the mini series on my channel that I like to call Mad Scientist. Now, you kind of can see some spoilers. I didn't really position myself correctly. Uh, so let's just get on with uh, the Mad Scientist for this particular episode. So previously, uh, we were trying to fix the stone generator that is common practice um it does have some issues that i don't like and let's uh let's kind of demonstrate this again i'm going to turn this off real quick and you're going to see that we do create stone there and then we are going to activate that so we got a block right here and we've got a typical redstone repeater clock right here that is common with this farm and you'll see some of the issues that i have with this particular configuration it's gonna hit the button it's gonna start going and oh look it's already got issues and we're producing cobblestone instead of stone meaning we're not getting this full area filled in uh, this is why over on that one we actually did it in like three sections so we've got stone being generated there there and then there and then something like here instead uh, not very efficient uh, this is the standard way to make this and generate stone but as you can see it is a little bit buggy on my end uh, I'm not sure why it may have something to do with the fact that I don't play on a server this may actually work better on a server but over here uh, we got the same kind of setup I've extended the repeater clock a little bit so we're gonna go ahead and activate this and uh, deactivate that. Yep, there it goes. And hit the button. We're gonna come over here and watch. Uh, oh look, we got exactly the same problem again. Yeah, exactly the same problem as over there. Only not in exactly the same configuration. And this is just with a uh, slightly longer redstone repeater clock so let's go over here let's turn this one off and uh, let's do this one too so this one's got a much longer redstone clock and it's as close to getting this farm working as I've ever been able to get I know people preach the redstone clock but this just never works for me so let's go ahead let's activate that come over here and start watching Oh look, it broke already. Surprise, surprise. So this is an issue that I've been trying to figure out how to fix. And it's something that is just a pain in the butt for me because a lot of people preach by these types of farms. And as you can clearly see, it's not working correctly. So let's go over here, let's turn this off, and let's get over to uh, what this episode is all about. Because I did come up with an idea on the spur of the moment that half worked half didn't and then I had to experiment with the actual redstone attached to it so over here we got a slightly different setup uh, this one is eight wide so we got one two three four five six seven eight areas where uh, stone is actually being generated and that's about as big as you can actually make it because of the way this is set up however you could extend this and have eight here come out uh, I don't know three blocks and do another eight but the redstone is completely different now you will see that we have a much longer uh, redstone repeater clock so this has got 20 repeaters so we got 18 here and then two on the sides there and I went for that particular style because we do need to create a little bit of delay to give the water and the lava time to actually generate and as you can see we've got the way we've got the water is we've got stairs that are waterlogged in there uh, you don't really need to have it the way I did with a three by one all waterlogged that was the initial idea is I wanted to waterlog all of this all these stairs here but it didn't really work the water kept disappearing and everything uh, so I hadn't changed that that's why that's there Really, all you need is the one directly below the lava source. Well, not directly, like 
put your lava source, put a block, and then have your water source uh, underneath that block. And uh, the rest of the redstone's a little bit more complex. And this is based off an idea that I saw with, uh, if you see that blue thing over there, that was me trying to understand the uh, lock code that Mumbo Jumbo had recently done in a video. Uh, it wasn't his, it was somebody else's. So I went and I looked at it and was like thinking about it and trying to figure it out and understand. Uh, I didn't really fully understand the process, but there was one thing that reminded me of something in Minecraft that many of us probably forget about. Uh, you know, real redstoners like Impulse and Tango and Mumbo are probably aware of this, but for us little guys, uh, it's, it's a little thing that you probably forget about it, and that's you can lock repeaters so that's what this little setup is all about so what is going to happen here so officially what is going to happen is our redstone clock is going to start over there by that button it's going to come around here go to here and it's going to loop back around there but it's also going to go into this repeater line right here that is all set to four ticks there are five of them right there this is not a tutorial this is just me showing my mad scientist side and showing my thought process on how to get my own redstone going without knowing any kind of redstone technology like there's probably a much simpler way to do this but it was something that i was just kind of like hey let's try and do it this way and uh this is what i came up with and it does work so the uh, redstone signal is going to go into this line of repeaters. It is set on four ticks. It's going to come over here into this repeater right here. However, this repeater is currently locked. So this piston is not going to push. And the way we lock this piston here is when the redstone block is on that side, it goes into this uh, repeater line here. That is supposed to be on four ticks. Uh, doesn't really matter. It seems to work fine regardless. Anyway. It's going to go into this line here, come across here, go into this comparator. Uh, I decided to go with comparators for, you know, reasons. Uh, I was doing some testing and putting a repeater there just kind of created a whole nother issue because it was somehow bug powering the repeater. So the repeater was both locked and on at the same time. So I had to put comparators there. Uh, I, if you're like, knowledgeable about stuff maybe you can explain it to me down in the comments I don't know why it would do that but anyway so that locks this repeater meaning that this piston right here is not gonna push so long as the block is over there at the same time that uh, signal is gonna go over into this line of repeaters over here and then into this line of repeaters over here and into this repeater and this repeater is gonna cause this to push the block back across now at the same time, it's going to activate this line of redstone here into our repeater array behind the pistons, which is going to push out its block so long as the redstone is active. It's, it's very important there. This line is going to be active the entire time the, the uh, redstone block is over there. So these pistons are going to be pushing out the uh, stone, which is going to block off the creation of more stone. Uh, we need a little bit of delay there. I'll explain why here in a second, once we get done explaining the redstone. So now, the uh, signals over here is going to go into this line of repeaters, and all of these are also set to four ticks. There are six of them right here, and then we've got another comparator right here, and into this repeater. So what's going to happen is this repeater is going to get locked, meaning that this piston cannot push so long as the redstone block is here. Make sense? Yeah, I didn't think so. It's like completely and utterly maddening. Uh, it took me a little while to actually figure out how to get this to work properly. Uh, I imagine you probably could do it differently with another circuit, um, but I don't know those circuits, so that's what I came up with. Uh, so basically what is going to happen is we are going to slow down the process of creating stone. Uh, we kind of needed to do this because what I was finding with these methods over here is that it's 
it's either pushing too quickly, meaning the water is not going to get where it needs to, or the tick speed of the lava is not being allowed to do its job, and that's why we're getting gaps in it. So over here with this, we're actually giving it a little bit of delay in order to actually create stone, which uh, so far in my testing works perfectly fine once I figured out this circuit. So let's go ahead and demonstrate this. We got that up. Let's go over here, hit our button. You can see we're going to come over here and watch some stone for a minute get generated. So you saw the piston get pushed across. So we got stone being pushed out. And now all these pistons are locked in place. Now they've been retracted. And you can see we saw the creation of something. Wait for it to push back across. And look, right there underneath the glass, you can see that we got a full line of eight stone being created. Now, I will admit this process is a little bit slower than the other ones that supposedly work. They have never worked correctly for me, and I don't know why people keep telling me I only need eight repeaters. That setup never works. But this one, what I've come up with here, I haven't had any problems since I figured out the redstone. We're just going to watch it for another second. Yep, see, we got a full line of stone all over again. Okay, so let's uh, actually go through this. So right now the uh, redstone block is over there. Here comes our signal. It's going to go over here into there. This repeater is currently locked. That one is not, so the block gets pushed across, which extends our pistons for the stone generator. Now that was unlocked this time, so the uh, signal went through and that piston pushed it across. This piston was locked, so the signal could not cause that piston to push. And we'll just sit here and watch it for a second so you can see what's going on. See the one on the right is unlocked, the one on the left is locked. So the one on the left cannot pass the signal, the one on the right can. Now the one on the right is locked the one on the left is not. So left pushes, right is locked. Okay, left is locked, so it's not gonna move. Right is unlocked, so it's gonna move. Now right is locked, left is unlocked. And it just keeps looping like that, giving a little bit of a delay. So it is going to cause this whole process to take a little bit longer. But um, generally with this setup here, you only have about five, now six area of stone that you can create. With what I've come up with, you can actually do eight. And uh, this is actually, if you push back the, the redstone just a little bit, you probably could actually make this tileable. So you could have uh, a couple of different sections actually within render distance and as far as redstone will render that it's actually working you could probably go all the way out and have massive fields of uh, stone being generated so yeah that is a little peek into my brain when it comes to thinking about redstone as i am claiming i am not a redstoner i am not a redstone engineer i'm just somebody that thinks up an idea and then starts working on it to see if i can get it to work so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, I will see you next time. I actually have a video coming out on Monday. We have a new episode for our series coming out. So I hope you guys will watch that. I hope you'll enjoy and uh, I will see you next time. Bye.